Okay, so let's talk about some other things when it comes to uh, some things to consider when doing room dynamics, okay? First of all, always keep your lesson target in mind. The danger when using room dynamics too much is that the dynamic becomes bigger than the target. Does that make sense? You try to create such a big experience that you miss your target. Always keep your lesson target in mind. Where do you want them to be when you end this lesson? And if a dynamic in the room can help that, then you've been successful. If what I wanted you to do was get to know each other better because I felt like that was a goal that we had and that's what our lesson was going to be and was on community, then you playing with the Legos for 20 minutes would have been right on target. If, you had just, if it was just a way for me to waste time because I didn't prepare, that would have been a bad use of the target, of the dynamics. Does that make sense? Um, but if I can incorporate it, then it's a great way to make sure that I use it. Another thing to consider is the reality of the size of your room and the size of your class. Uh, if you've got 80 people in your room, then that's a, it's going to be a little more complicated uh, on what you can and cannot do. Uh, some things I would want to do, but I can't because of the size of my room. Um, some things you can do because you have a small group and everybody thinks, man, I wish my group was bigger. Sometimes it's great to have a small group because you can do a whole lot of things that others can't do. So uh, there's always good and bad with every size, with every room, with every dynamic. Depending on what building you're in here, depends on what kind of tables you can get. Like, friend, we don't do round tables in E2. We only do rectangular tables because that way they don't have to carry buildings, tables back and forth between buildings. So Faith Hall has round tables, but they don't have, they do have some rectangular tables. Um, and they have some lecture tables that cause a different kind of environment for what we're trying to accomplish. But all the APs have round tables. So it's all the different dynamics of what we're trying to create. Um, other things to consider, all the resources that are available to you. Now, like I said, I went and I got Legos. I have Legos. I keep them in my closet so I can grab them when I want a, a teaching dynamic. Um, but you, and I told you I went and got greenery all around the campus. I went and utilized my research. Now, if you do that, I'm going to deny ever that I said that or that you're going to do that. But you can look at all the resources. If you've got people that are really tech, then use them. If you've got people that are really creative and they can paint and they can build and they can do things, well, use that. Think about all the resources. And that's one of the reasons why it's important to know your learners. Because the more you get to discover them, you discover they've got a specialty that they just love. For instance, maybe one of um, you like to travel. Maybe I found out you went to Israel. And we're going to be talking about the temple. Or we're going to be talking about... Jerusalem. And you told me last week 35 minutes about your trip to Jerusalem. What a way to use him to empower him and him sharing about his trip. Last year I got to go on the journeys of Paul and we were when we were studying in Ephesians and talking about Ephesus, I pulled up pictures of my journey through Ephesus and why this scripture became three-dimensional to me before I I mean after I went because I realized the culture that I was walking in was very different than our American culture and what this passage meant. If you've got people that have experienced that, well, use them. Those are resources that are available to you. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, but if you've got people who can do that and want to do that, utilize that. That's a great thing to use. But take advantage, full advantage, of all your resources that are available to you. And you may discover you have more resources than you think. A lot more than you think. Uh, you need to think about the frequency. Uh, coming in every week with a different idea uh, can create an atmosphere where people won't bring people because they can't be dependent on what's going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to bring a guest if I think you're going to make that guest feel uncomfortable because they have to share. Uh, Legos are pretty safe. Uh, if they walk in and there's four circles every week, they may not feel as comfortable doing that. Does that make sense? because they may not feel like are bringing somebody with them. Uh, so sometimes you just have to think about the frequency. Have I worn my... We do this in church. We try to evaluate. Okay, we've been heavy, heavy, heavy the last few weeks. We need to make sure the music's a little brighter and a little more fun because we want to make sure that everything here uh, isn't just heavy, heavy, that we can breathe a little bit and then we'll go back down. Same thing in my classroom, same thing uh, in the dynamics that you're trying to create in a classroom. So ask yourself... Uh, and because the temptation is going to be, if you get in that pattern, 
you're going to feel like you have to come up with something creative. And again, you're still you're more worried about the creativity than you are the target. Does that make sense? And so just ask yourself about the frequency. How often should I use this? And, and you don't have to feel like you got to have a different room set up every week. That's going to war, that's going to wear us out. First of all, no. Just but if it'll help you set up and do that, then that's a good thing. Another thing to consider are your learners. You may be, I'm, I'm, I'm a creative by nature, and I can over-creative, be over-creative for my, my team uh, based on uh, and what I want to do. And so I try to limit that and make sure that I do it uh, with them in mind uh, with what's going on and what I'm trying to accomplish. So consider uh, the learners when you're planning that. Uh, I've kind of spoken to this already, but empowerment. Uh, consider how you can empower the people in your room so you can get them engaged and get them to do things that really are out of your wheelhouse, but you know it'll help create a dynamic for better learning. If you can do that, that's a win-win. Uh, I see this all the time in life groups. If there's a party coming up, uh, some of the guys or the girls will decorate the room based on what that theme's going to be for something that they're doing. Um, they'll come up, they'll do a newsletter, or they'll do a follow-up to what the lesson was, and somebody really likes that kind of stuff, they'll take good notes and send it to everybody who wasn't there. That's empowering the people in your class to really utilize them to help you create a better a learning environment uh, in your classroom. So I, I encourage you to consider that. Another thing, especially if you're small, I'd consider field trips. I think any time we can go on a field trip, it's just fun. I loved field trips in school. Probably not surprised by that. Um, I loved field trips. And if we can go somewhere on campus and it can help communicate more effectively, then why not? Especially if you're a smaller group. Remember, I think the first week we talked about if we're talking about volunteerism, and that's the subject of being a servant, and what that means to visit different areas of the campus who need volunteers. Um, I, I, I kid my group all the time. I want to build a deck off the back of AP8. That's usually the room I teach in. Because there's some days we just need to be out on the water. You know? Um, I've tempted to just teach from a boat like Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it, it's just, it's sometimes it's good to get out, especially if it's a beautiful day and Depending on what you're teaching on, a field trip could be exactly what you need to do. Go If you're talking about worship one day, schedule some time with John Marks in between services to where he could speak to your group, but go to the choir room to do that. I don't know, but think about all the places you could go so it just breaks up the predictability of what's going to happen every week in a class. Uh, I don't know about you, I don't like walking in and it being predictable every time. Uh, my class probably, under, they, they, they get used to my predictability now, uh, and I probably need to break it up. And I'll break it up and go crazy. Instead of two points, I'll have three. Uh, I mean, no, just, um, but there's all kinds of different things you can do on field trips. Tech, uh, I think techs, uh, tech is a great way to consider and to utilize, especially the people. Um, for instance, we got a guy in our class. He is a, um, he's a, how would you say he's a light choreographer? Mike, what would you say, Robert? He's, he puts together light shows at Christmas in his yard. So his Christmas trees and all his lights in his yard blink the thing. Well, I'm trying to figure out ways. How can I use Robert? He's obviously got a passion for this. Is there a way, if we're talking about light, if we're talking about something that he can create for the class, that to you, that's a different kind of technology than I know. I don't know it. But if there's a way for us to do it, then it'd be interesting to see that happen. Uh, one of the things we'll talk about in a minute, um, using FaceTime or Skype. How cool would it be instead of talking about missionaries, talking to a missionary on the field? Uh, all of these APs, uh, I think all of them, are equipped with Wi-Fi. Uh, the buildings are equipped with internet. We can, if we pre-arrange this, we can definitely have one of our missionaries, and it may be two o'clock their time, but they're willing to get up and talk to us live when we when ben goes to denver of course we can talk to ben on a sunday or something in the class and get an update or how can we pray for you and and utilizing technology makes this thing get smaller does that make sense and so there's also ways you can use that and uh, I'll, I'll wait because i think we're going to go over all those in a minute room usage uh one of the things you need to consider is how often your room's used and by whom Meaning we use most rooms three times every Sunday morning. So what 
you getting creative and doing something different every week means somebody's got to come behind you and reset the room for how they need it. Does that make sense? So we have to consider those things uh, based on some of the requests that you have. And so we just have to work together. And there are times we can do that. Some groups say, hey, we'll take care of it. We'll make sure it's set for the next group before they come up. But we want to do this. And that's fine. We work out and that works good. And uh, it helps us create uh, some great environments for people to do. Uh, last thing is clean up. Uh, depending, I've got to make sure I get these Legos out of here when this is done. All right? I don't need to leave that for the person who's next. If we did something real creative with paint, please don't. Um, but if we did something creative with a lot of things, we just need to make sure we clean up after ourselves so don't, we don't make that a burden um, because we need to be respectful of the places that we are and the things that we do. Uh, especially if we go on a field trip, if we're using candles in a service or in our classroom for something, we don't need the wax to get everywhere. We just need to make sure that that's cleaned up and considered uh, because other people use those rooms. Okay? Any questions so far? Yeah. Uh huh. That's a resource. You talk about going to emphasis and all that kind of stuff that I don't know how many people are aware of. Glow Bible is kind of a three dimensional app uh, on your iPad or your phone where you can actually tour different places in time. So the temple you can actually go through. You want to add some more to that? It's a great resource, and if again, you don't know how, there's probably somebody in your group who does. Uh, we're working to equip every room with new TVs. Uh, uh, in a few weeks, all of the top of Faith Hall and the outside rooms are going to be equipped with new TVs. Um, all the APs now have new TVs, and we're starting to upgrade some of the rooms in, in E2. And so that's coming. It's just going to take us a while to get there. All the cross references and Interruption. Yeah, like when we were in Madagascar, we could not use Skype. We didn't have to use Skype voice to get back to the US because it needed too much bandwidth. So I wasn't aware of Zoom got the US back then, but it's free for one to one combinations and it's uh, if you want like a hundred and some, it's only ten bucks a month. So gotcha. it's way cheaper and it gives you a lot of combinations, whether it's work or work or class. It means the next generation. Yeah. Well, there's definitely some great apps and great resources out there that will help you as far as educationally teaching and communicating.